All right, so um, I've constrained this model, all right, or this this sketch, okay? Um, a couple of good things y'all did is y'all are starting at the origin. That's that's good practice, all right? You need to make sure your students know to do that. People who don't start at the origin are not good. Don't do that. That's, that's amateur stuff. Um, the next thing is, is I built a model of the tool, okay? The, the uh, tool um, insert, all right? So it's a quarter inch inside inscribed circle V style insert. Again, Seco's website. This is not just on Seco. Almost all these manufacturers are gonna have an ISO tool section. So we went with a V. This doesn't really matter for what we're doing. We have a tolerance section here. We're ignoring that. We're at a quarter inch inside inscribed circle. And what an inscribed circle is, is this thing on the inside. So we've got all of our dimensions here, 35, 35, 145 between the corners. We've got a tangent circle inside here that means it's inscribed. And I set that diameter to quarter inch. And then I constrained, I constrained this to kind of make this uh, helpful for me. So what I've done is I've put a line here, all right, that's attached here and here. And I made that line horizontal. You could also make it just parallel to this feature. It doesn't matter. And I've given it a distance. So what that allows me to do is to come back here and grab the tail of the tool and do this number and move it in and out, all right? So this is kind of like how a lathe would function, all right? So what we can do is we can get an idea of what we want. So, okay, so for a lot of these features on this side, we can see if this tool is facing like this, we're gonna be able to cut, we might even be able to cut the whole dang thing, right? So, um, so we can just use different constraints to get this to what we want it to do. So say we're like, all right, well, um, I wanna constrain this slightly different. So we could delete this this here. All right, on our constraint here. And we could do a parallel constraint between here and here, all right? Okay, and we'll press escape. All right, because we got that constraint there. Now, what this thing's gonna do, this is gonna allow us to see where this tool will get to. So what we can see, so we're touching down here, and we're touching up here. So what that means is that this feature, this geometry cannot be made with this tool. It's gonna cut this, to a 35 degree angle right here. So we've got two options is one, you gotta make some parameters around how you can dimension things. The second option is, is you're gonna have to use this tool in a different direction, okay? But if we look, so we've got this thing facing like this and we just come here and we kind of just move it around the model. We can even take this dude and it won't work because these are all different lines, but you can constrain the tip of it to this with a um, coincidence feature up here. All right, to get that done. But basically you can just kind of move this thing around. You can make, you just want to make sure that there's clearance between here and between here at all times. If there's not clearance, it's going to overcut or undercut. So then we got, we know we got a problem here, right? But we can go up here. It's going to cut this whole thing, right? Come up here. Why not? It's going to cut this. There's going to not, there's going to be zero clearance there, but that is the one place where it's, it's gonna be okay. Um, if it does that, it might chatter a little. Come out here, come up here. All right, so what is that What is that telling us? So it's telling us what we want is we wanna come find an ISO tool that's gonna to place this angle here. So we wanna flip our tool out like this, right? But it's gonna place this angle at a negative or a zero degree um, angle. So that is going to be, so that that is gonna be this A right here, all right? So it's saying that from the side of this tool to the end of the tool, there is zero degrees. Um, I think that that is specific to that particular one, but um, there it, we may be able to find a, um, maybe fi able to find an S, V, A, um, and then whatever. So, so not all of these configurations exist. Maybe it's an SVG or something like that. We just have to go through and look. So the next thing is the place I would go to look for this is Sandvik because I like their, um, I think that their website is, I, I've not used a lot of the other ones, but Sandvik's website is, is really nice. So um, you can get the tooling guys to come drop you off some of these catalogs and those can be helpful as well to find different tools. So I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna go find some S whatever, some V style insert tools. And we're going to, uh, we're gonna resume discussion after that.
All right, so the one thing I like about Sandvik's website is it's like Google, they have a great search function. So what I did is I just started typing. So I want an S, I want a V, and it's gonna start pulling crap up. Okay, so they got an SVVBN, something like that. So I wanted an SV, and then if we go back to our, our ISO designation, all right, well, what's the next thing? All right, so the next thing is, so we got an S, we got a V, which is, um, the uh this dude here then um let's see the so then we need to go to sorry wrong thing we have an s which is the screw clamp we got a v and then the very next thing is our angle so we um so a vv is a neutral we want a va or like a vj or we want a vg so if we start typing on their their website let's see if there's an sva okay there's svas is there an SVG? There's no SVGs. SVJ. There's SVJs. SVVs. There's SVVs. So you can start typing it in and you can understand like what tooling people even make. So I'm gonna stop this video here and then we're gonna pull up one of these examples and talk through it.